So you man have been asking for another jaw tutorial. This one is gonna be how to mix a jaw beat. It's kind of simple how to mix a jaw beat. I'm gonna get to it. Mixing beats in general is just training your ear. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you need to have a trained ear because every beat that you make is gonna have a different mix. So don't worry about certain you know techniques to stick to because over time when your ears get better and they're more trained you're gonna find out your own techniques on how to do stuff which is what i do so i don't really go by the rule book like there's no rules when you're making music you know what i'm saying you do what you want i would say that when you're just starting out making beats you kind of if you're looking at tutorials then yeah follow what the person's saying follow what i'm saying you know what i'm saying but over time you can kind of do your own shit uh man so gonna start off with the piano now with pianos what you want to do is you want to have a certain frequencies so um yeah i'm gonna go right into the eq i basically just took it off so i can start again but yeah, this is what it sounded like so let me go to my piano let's make sure it's on piano now what i want to do instantly with piano is take out all the low end and just leave a little bit of li the low mid just a little bit now to change the steepness of this band you want to fuck around with this so the band order is basically going to change how much of the frequency you want cut out and how quick you want it to be cut out so the way it's looking at now it's allowing it's allowing more of the low end and it's cutting out more of the high end or if you want it like completely cut out, like very sharp, you can have it like that. I want some of the low end, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually cut out some frequencies. So cutting out frequencies is easy. What you need to do is you wanna raise this max all the way. You're probably thinking, why the fuck are you raising it with max? I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. So all you wanna do is you wanna make the width of this skinny. And listen up for any frequencies you don't like. So you can hear with that, it's the store in here. You can see that here. It's the store in with this frequency. So I want to have it around like three. So I'm actually going to cut out this frequency roughly about halfway. Kind of about six even. It's even better that way. But yeah. Now I'm going to look for another frequency that I want to cut out and the reason why you want to cut out frequencies is just so your overall mix just sounds cleaner, do you know what I'm saying? You might not even recognise it but you know your body knows what sounds good and what doesn't sound good so yeah I'm going to look for more frequencies that I don't like. Instantly got one I don't like, that one's a bit loud so I'm going to cut out with this one and you might be asking like how much do I cut out? You just basically cut out so when, when you don't like something, you cut out more of it. If it's not too bad, you don't cut out that much of it. That's basically what you do. Now I'm going to raise the frequency. Now raising frequencies, you ain't really got to do much with that. All you have to do is just raise this. But make sure it's wide. Make sure the bandwidth is wide. Don't, make, don't have it skinny like that. Make sure it's wide and have it down like that. I'm going to raise the high end as well, just a little bit. And then... Alright, so that's all for the piano. Now I'm gonna go on to the 808s. I'm gonna be probably waiting for the 808s. So, yeah, straight on to that. This is what it sounds like. Right? So, let me play it with the beat because it just sounds way really well. So, yeah, that's what the beat sounds like. Right? And yeah, I'm gonna go straight on to the 808s. Now with 808s, you really ain't gotta do much. You just have to cut out all of the upper mid to the treble. And you wanna cut out slightly, just a little bit of the muddy frequency. I call it the muddy frequency because it doesn't actually have a name for it. It's just low bass. Anything below low bass is just muddy. Now, you wanna do that with your 808s. You wanna cut out just a little bit. But if, you, if you're using the sub bass, you want to leave this, like, just have it like that. But with 808s, you want to cut just a little bit. It just makes it cleaner. 
Now with 808, you don't really want to rise anything. Because if you've got eight, all these 808 slides going on, you've got all this madness going on, it's going to make those things louder than the actual 808 itself. Like the starting note of the 808. And you don't want that. You want everything to be level. So don't rise anything. Don't cut anything. Just leave it like that. Now I'm going to go on to all of the percussion instruments. So I'm actually going to go right here. And I'm going to keep the perks the snares, hi-hats, and the bows. And yeah, let me show you what's on there. So, yeah. so first thing I'm gonna start off with is the, the hi-hats. Now the hi-hats, what we wanna do, I'm actually resetting this. I'm gonna, you know, mute everything else. Hi-hats, I don't really need to do much with it. It's what it's sounding like now. And you can see there's some activity in the upper mid region. So you want to cut that out, you don't have to cut it out, but it just helps it to sound a lot cleaner. And then raise this frequency here. So here's the difference. Without EQ, with EQ. Sounds a lot sharper. Now what we want to do is go to the perks, if you have a perk. And the perks all the way over here, so I'm going to play this. That's the perk, I'm sure you've heard this perk before. Now I'm gonna listen for any frequencies I don't like, cut it, and then raise frequencies I do like. I actually like that. That frequency right there, I actually like that a lot. So I'm gonna go to this one here, raise this, and then put this back to its original place. Now I don't like that frequency, so I'm gonna carve a very little bit of it. I'm gonna raise this frequency here. There's no rules to EQing, but this is what I do to make my beat sound good. And um, yeah, it's pretty much just training your ears, so don't follow the rules if you have good ears. I don't really follow the rules, I just do what I want with my, my mixes. Like, putting a soft clip on the, on the master, it just makes the whole mix sound punchy. The sounds nice, you know what I'm saying? It's just proper juicy kick, so. Yeah, that's what I do with my kicks. That's pretty much it for the tutorial, but there's one more thing I need to do. So I'm gonna go to the snares. And yeah, I'm explaining this. So with snares, I don't really do much either. I just cut the low mid. Nice and sharp. And the way you can tell there's a dominating frequency within your EQ is if it's a lot brighter in one region. So right here, you can see it's bright. This is where most of the sound is coming from for the snare. Now to make things sharper in terms of snares, hi-hats, perks, you want to just raise these frequencies. So you want to make stuff sound sharper, raise it over here that sounds nice and sharp so i'm gonna leave that now you can see stereo enhancers on here i wouldn't really suggest putting stereo enhancers on here but if you want to you want to have it on this setting here so you can have it either to the left or the right now this is phasing so what phasing is is basically having an instrument it's like a delay basically it's basically a delay and it's delaying it from the left to the right so the reason why you want that it helps to recognize when something's separated or not now with perks and hats and stuff like that you don't really need to separate it but with your melodies you do want to do that so i'm gonna go to the melodies and show you a perfect example so you can see if you put it to the right that's making it mono and if you put it to the left it's making it stereo and you want your melodies in stereo your melody probably should be the widest thing in your mix so have it this wide you don't and the way to have this perfect way of doing it every time is just go to the plugin options, go on presets and then click for strings. That'd be wired. Now I'm gonna actually play without this and you hear the difference. You probably can't hear that if you're playing it on the phone, but if you have headphones, anything near you, you put them in and you, you hear the slight difference of that. Now half time, this is a beast right here, yeah. This one is mad. It's basically like growth speed, but um, better. So 
This is basically looping the melody in a different way. So if I click quarter, it's gonna be different. It's like the momentary halftime on gross beat, but you have more options with that. And you can also decrease the mix. So basically what this is doing is allowing the original melody to seep in. So you can have the momentary halftime with the original melody. So this was something. Like this is what it actually sounds like. Basically what this does, it will actually make it sound a lot smoother if you drag this to the right. It's like slightly raising up, it's raising up. Yeah. So that's half time. And these volume knobs here, I'm not touching those because I already adjusted them in the channel rack and I adjusted them in the playlist roll. So with hi-hats you can clearly see how some of them, you know, it's different volumes. But don't do that if you're not gonna mix in. If you're still learning mixing, then just like adjust it here. Don't do it here because it's not giving you a clear indication of how loud and quiet things are. So just do it in the, you know, in the mixer here. Now for the master, what you wanna do is, if you want punchy kicks, this is one way of having punchy kicks. I'm gonna do another tutorial on how to have punchy mixes without having to do this. But yeah, this is what it's sounding like with the kicks. Let me put everything back on. And just leave the kicks by itself. So you can see it's peaking in its own channel, but it's not peaking on the master. And what you do is you put you put through your soft clipper and don't touch any of the settings, just put through soft clipper on its own. Have the kicks um, peaking here. And through your soft clipper is basically it's acting like a limiter when you put on the master. And it's a good thing for your jaw tracks because it makes your whole mix punchy. That's one way of doing it. There's another way of doing it, it's a more advanced way, a more professional way of doing it, which is using, I wouldn't say professional, but it's another way of doing it. You can use Maximus on the master and then adjust every frequency. So, you know what, I might always do it for you now. So, yeah, you want to go to your lows. You want to solo this out so you can adjust the low end, the mid and the high separately for the master. So with this, you can see it's kind of peaking a little bit. And wherever this, you see the gaps in between here, this is where you want to right click and then you do, you do the compression. I wouldn't suggest, I would suggest leaving this for the 808 tracks. You don't want, you don't want to do this with 808 tracks because, um, 808 tracks, you don't, want to, you don't want to do this with dual tracks. And uh, yeah, stereo separation on here, turn it all the way to the right. Because, like I said, the low frequencies need to be a mono, and you basically just leave it. That's it. And then go to your mids. Our oh, mids, you want to make sure this is separate. It's basically making all the mid range frequencies wider in your mix without having to do like every single channel on its own. Obviously, I do every single channel on its own, and then I clean up with the master. So, do this. Now the way you can tell whether to like raise this or to lower it is basically what sounds good. So if I do it all the way down, you can tell it's gonna sound bad. It sounds like the mix is very quiet and it's like very compressed. Let's just get a safe spot here. Now I'm gonna go into the hi hats, do the same thing. With hats, you don't really want to cut out too much. Just a little bit. I'm slightly compressed. I can hear a slight difference with that. And you want to do the same thing with, you know, separating the stereo. Make sure it's wide. And that's what it sounds like, but overall. Let me go here again. Imagine to raise this a bit. Have this in normal settings that it was before. And that's how you can have a punchy jaw track without having to use fruity soft clipper. So 
So there's two ways of doing it. I suggest doing the fruity soft clipper technique first because this maximus technique is quite advanced. But you know, if you think you can do the maximus technique, you have good ears, then try the maximus technique. Yeah, that's it for the tutorial. Like and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials. Obviously, I'm going to be doing more tutorials. So yeah, comment down below as well what you want next. I got a lot of shit coming, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna have a specific day because fam, I fucked up the last two weeks, I can't lie. I fucked up, I went to upload on Tuesday every week, but shit got busy. But yeah, I'm gonna just upload when I can. So if you don't wanna miss any tutorials, go to my channel and click the bell icon. That's the only way you're gonna get notifications that, that any new videos that I've got. So yeah, click that, subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I'm coming out more shit.